Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It's time for the final installment in the 2019 Top 5 Best GPU series. And with the recent arrival of AMD's Radeon RX 5500 XT, we now have the final piece of 2019's GPU puzzle. But before we get too far into it, Today's video is sponsored by ASRock and their brand new X299 Creator motherboard designed to support Intel's latest generation of Core X processors. You'll have no trouble getting the most out of the Core i9-10980XE on this board. And as the name suggests, the X299 Creator is also designed for content creators and that means it packs Thunderbolt 3 technology, 10 gigabit ethernet and loads of USB Gen 3 ports. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so the idea of this video is to summarize our findings to date and steer you towards the best buy possible at each price point. As usual, we do have five categories covering numerous price ranges, so there should be something for everyone. So let's get into it. The expectation was that AMD would solidify their dominance in the entry-level gaming market with the release of the Radeon RX 5500 XT series, but with barely competitive pricing on the 4 and 8GB models, that wasn't really the case. The 8GB 5500 XT costs more than the 8GB RX 580, and it's really no faster. Sure, it is much more power efficient, but for the most part, gamers don't really care about power usage. They just want those frames, and the more, the better. The 4GB 5500 XT is also outdone by the RX 580. Again, a similar level of performance overall, and this time for the same price, but the drawback is you get half as much VRAM. And in games like Battlefield 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Call of Duty Modern Warfare, having that extra VRAM can be very important, and no doubt with games coming up next year, it'll become even more important. Having said all that, if power consumption is of concern for you, then I'd recommend the GeForce GTX 1650 Super. It uses even less power than the 5500 XT, and it doesn't seem to suffer nearly as much when memory usage is at its peak, presumably due to superior memory compression technology and perhaps better driver optimization. Now, if all you care about is getting the most performance for your money, which seems to be the case with most gamers, then it has to be the Radeon RX 570. Brand new, I've seen them selling for as low as $110 US for the 4GB version, and they can regularly be had for $130, making it by far the best value gaming GPU. The 8GB version can also be had for around $150, but at that point I would suggest spending another $20 or so to secure the 8GB RX 580. So, in the $100 to $200 US price range, the Radeon RX 574GB and RX 588GB are without question the best value options. That said, also keep an eye out for deals on the RX 590 as they have started popping up for well under $200, so at that price, yeah, certainly worth keeping an eye out for. Anyway, hopefully next year, 7 nanometer supply will improve and AMD can start to offer the RX 5500 XT series at more competitive prices. If you're able and wanting to spend over $200, but no more than $300 US, then that places you in a bit of a strange place right now uh, in today's GPU market. Until AMD releases the RX 5600 series, so hopefully that comes early next year, but until then, they don't really have anything here unless you can get your hands on an outgoing Vega 56 model with a decent cooler at a reasonable price. The Gigabyte Vega 56 Gaming OC model, for example, that can be often found selling for around $270 US. And while many AMD fans will scream from the rooftops that this is the deal of the century, I'm not completely convinced it is. I'll admit it is compelling, but I think I'd rather go with the GTX 1660 Super and it comes in at a similar cost per frame based on the data from our 17 game average. So while the 1660 Super might be 15% slower on average, generally speaking, it also seems to cost a lot less in most regions, and that includes Australia, and it's just worlds better in terms of power usage. 
We've seen when factoring in the total system usage with an overclocked Core i9 9900K at 5 gigahertz, the Vega 56 configuration consumed 54% more power when gaming. Now, I know gamers don't prioritize power usage as I've already mentioned in this video, but come on, over 50% more is getting a little bit ridiculous. Therefore, for those of you spending over $200, I'd recommend the GTX 1660 Super, but please note you can get almost as much performance out of the RX 590 for around $30 to $40 less. Finally, for those of you that can push the budget up to around $300, I'd strongly suggest you keep an eye out for a discounted Radeon RX 5700. Uh, they've been going on sale for around $300 recently, and yet at that price, they are a cracking good deal. Okay, so the three to $600 price range. I know that's quite a broad price range, but in today's market, it makes sense to look at, well, that range basically. And that range is locked down by AMD and their Radeon RX 5700 series, which comprises of the vanilla 5700 and the 5700 XT. Now, after creating a massive benchmark video, a series of massive benchmark videos featuring more than 30 games. We have a pretty good idea of how the 5700 and 5700 XT stack up against the GTX 2060 Super and 2070 Super. In short, the 5700 XT is $100 cheaper than the 2070 Super, and when compared across a massive range of games, it was just 6% slower on average at 1440p, and that meant it was 14% cheaper per frame in our cost per frame analysis. The only reason you might consider the RTX 2070 Super would be for 4K gaming, but even there, the 5700 XT still offered more value, despite being 9% slower. It also cost 20% less. The 5700 XT also eliminates the RTX 2060 Super, offering more performance at the same price, while the vanilla 5700 offers 2060 Super light performance for around a $50 discount. So this one's pretty cut and dry. Get a 5700 series graphics card. Easy. Easy done. And this one's pretty easy as well. If you have around $700 to spend on a new graphics card, congratulations, that is a big old wad of money. But your only option, if you want to dump it all on one product, is to do so with a GeForce RTX 2080 Super. That is what you'd be after. And yeah, as I said, that's because there is no alternative, but be aware you are going well beyond the point of diminishing returns. For example, you're paying 52% more per frame when compared to the 5700 XT. That's an insane premium. And really it's not that much faster. In fact, I'd go as far to say that it's just a bad joke. The 2080 Super is just 15% faster on average when compared to the 5700 XT, yet it's priced 75% higher. There's really not much more to say here. The 2080 Super was the worst of the Super refresh from Nvidia, but with no competition from AMD, they can clearly get away with charging prices that make no sense. And as the saying goes, there's a sucker born every minute. The 2080 Super is so bad in terms of value that it actually feels silly including it in this top five best GPU video, but while it might only be 15% faster than the 5700 XT on average, it does offer a higher tier of performance, and the $700 price point has been represented by high-end NVIDIA GPUs for almost a decade now. Really, in my opinion, the 2080 Ti should be the $700 option, but alas, it costs even more per frame. And that's how we ended up here, the $1,000 plus price point. In fact, if you can land a 2080 Ti for $1,000, you're actually doing pretty well, at least by 2080 Ti standards. Expect to pay more like $1,100 to $1,200 US. But the point here is, once again, for those of you with really deep pockets, all options are Nvidia, and the only choice for gamers seeking maximum performance is the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. And it really is a beast, offering around 20% more performance than the RTX 2080 Super, 
though it also costs around 40% more as well. So be aware of that. And as I just noted with the 2080 Super, it is horrible value. Here you're paying about 175% more, that is correct, 175% more than the 5700 XT for 47% more performance at 4K. That said, it does enable a much higher quality 4K gaming experience as an almost 50% performance uplift is quite significant, but so is a 175% price increase. So at the end of the day, if you're after a no compromise type solution for the ultimate 4K gaming experience, then get ready to part with at least $1,000 US, probably more like $1,200 US if you want one of the more fancy versions such as the Gigabyte Aorus Extreme or MSI Gaming X Trio, or maybe even the ASUS ROG Strix, for example. Personally, I just opt to turn down a few quality settings and go with something like the 5700 XT, but that of course would be a compromise, and if you're not up for making any kind of compromises, then yeah, be prepared to pay a serious GeForce tax. And that brings us to the end of our picks. I have to say, it is quite hard to believe that we just had AMD release their Radeon RX 5500 XT series, and we're overlooking them entirely in this video. I've noticed a lot of people in the comments section of our previous 5500 XT content seem to believe the higher than expected 5500 XT pricing is due to oversupply of the RX 500 series GPUs, which is a bit of a strange theory to be honest. If that were the case, why release the 5500 XT at all? And then countering that argument, I've been told all along it was AMD's plan to make the 570, 580, and 590 look good. It's my belief that the real reason the 5700 XT series isn't priced where it should be is supply, as I said in my day one review. TSMC 7 nanometer capacity doesn't afford AMD the ability to flood the market with competitively priced 5700 XTs that undercut the competition in the same way the 570 series does. The 5700 XT die is just 37% smaller than the 570 die, and right now AMD is charging 43% less. And given the supply issues, that's really the best they could probably justify doing. The 5500 XT needs to be at least 50% cheaper, but again, the die is only 37% smaller, so they simply can't afford to do that right now. In the end, I think it's a bit of a disappointing result for budget gamers. The 1650 Super is a nice, efficient graphics card, but most of you guys probably don't care about that. You just want your price to performance. And the 1650 Super is not amazing there. Also, well, mostly because it is limited to four gigabytes of VRAM. If it had eight, it'd be a pretty sweet product, I think. But anyway, we have the old never die. They just keep on going RX 500 series graphics cards. So you've got those to fall back on. So yeah, not too bad. Then the mid-range does appear to be all AMD with their 5700 series. And then obviously if you've got money to burn with some really high end graphics cards, then it is all Nvidia with those powerful, super high end extreme options. And that is gonna do it for this one. Hopefully those picks were useful for those of you looking at buying a graphics card in time for Christmas. That's a bit exciting. You'll probably have to get moving if you are thinking of doing that. Though there'll probably be some really good buys in January as well. So the video will be useful for those of you looking at Boxing Day sales and whatnot. But yeah, if you agree with the picks, then I suppose let me know why. It's always nice to hear when, when people agree with you. And when you if you don't agree, if you've got some sort of rebuttal you'd like to drop below, whether it's you completely disagree with the pick or you think there's something I've overlooked or haven't read correctly, then yeah, feel free to drop that below and I'll do my best to our reply. Anyway, above all else, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.